Welcome to the fourth match between Thebus and Jiraiya. Jiraiya winning last match. And it has been an exciting series thus far. <clears throat> do I do we want to do a color? Let's let's stick with the colors. Upper left hand corner, we got Phoebus starting as the mustard yellow Terran. Upper right hand corner, we have Jiraiya starting as the blue Zerg. This is BSL 13 semifinals of Hasu League. Jiraiya loses this game. He is out and Phoebus advances. If he wins this game, we go on to a fifth set. This is going to be on Wavelet. I looked up the statistics right before this. And it looks like it is about dead even. Something like 51% either direction. But not a lot of games played on it. <clears throat> it is a larger, more macro-oriented map, which potentially could play in Jiraiya's favor. As Jiraiya has wanted to thus far open up oftentimes with that lurker play and ride that into the mid game and there are a lot of ramps to work with where you can see lurkers could be very very effective especially hold position lurkers and just general map control in the mid game should dry opt to work with lurkers again he's moving his overlord bottom right and corner the other advantage for Jiraiya on this map is this is a larger map which means the aggression that Phoebus might want to field, Overlord opener here, by the way, the aggression, the aggression that typically Phoebus might want to field could be harder to execute just because of how far it takes to move across the map. Also, these spawn locations, I also believe, work towards Jiraiya's advantage against Phoebus in particular because you have all of the ramps and he's got to cross midfield. And so there's more kind of empty vision he has to walk through to make it happen. 12 hatchery for dry or maybe 11 hatchery. I think that was a uh, 11 hatchery. Drone dropping that spawning pool. Phoebus gets first scout in the upper hand corner. And it looks like Phoebus has already dropped gas. So he is opting for either mech play or potentially, potentially something like 111. We'll see as the game proceeds. Dry in the meantime, gets first scout with the drones doing a bit of harassment he sees that gas so now the question is who has better macro and as far as a straight up macro fight i think they're pretty much even jiraiya has shown that he can get in macro situations and do pretty well phoebus has shown blazing macro when he's had the opportunity to do so scv pocketing itself for a moment now going to scoot in see that hatchery finish spawning pool just finishing no gas as of yet, for Jiraiya, getting a few more drones a little bit earlier, which I actually like that play upon seeing the Assimilator, knowing that it is very likely going to be more of an early game push to who can build more, more rapidly. Third hatchery in base as a response. Drone moving back to the main to draw that SCV back to these initial Zerg lengths. Now turning around, doing a bit of extra damage and pulling back every drone and SCV counts at this stage, and any delayed mining time that Phoebus can inflict will be helpful towards his goal of just outproducing. Factory down. We expect to see a vulture first. Two marines on the ramp to block additional scouts. This hatchery will also help with a potential Sim City. Creep colony already preventatively being dropped down, and it looks like it is going to be a 1-1-1 variation because we have the vulture initially being produced, marines continuously being produced, and a starport very rapidly to follow. Hydralis Den being planted behind this, so it looks like it's going to be three hatch Hydra for Jiraiya. The two Zerglings are going to spot the Vulture at the very least and otherwise sacrifice their lives on the front door. Also saw the four Marines pressing out. Creek Colony into Sunken Colony already there, plus a decent Sim City on the front. This is pretty good protective layering. Sometimes what this Vulture can do is force out early Hydralisks rather than early drones. Speed upgrade for the Hydralisks being researched immediately. And ooh, the drone exposed on that corner. That could have been a big win early on. Gas continuing to be harvested. Control tower being dropped. Another option that could happen here is Thebus could go for dropship play. And dropships versus this can also be very effective. He's starting to move out. Four Marines moving on the corner. That Overlord is exposed. This could be huge for Thebus if he can catch this Overlord out in the open. Jiraiya currently in the, would be in the red should this Overlord get picked off. He has no Zerglings or Hydralisks to defend it. 
So a big shift in momentum now. Jiraiya losing that Overlord. It's not game ending, but it certainly hurts. It's particularly getting an early one right there. That's going to supply cap him at a critical moment. And it is a dropship. A dropship being produced with vultures. It's going to go ahead and grab an academy and a science facility behind this. Rather than opting for Wraith play. And I think this is an adjustment to everything that Jiraiya has done thus far. As far as just opting for more Hydralisk centric play. Range being upgraded. There are four Hydralisks in a defensive position, but is that going to be enough to stop these vultures before they obliterate one of these drone lines? And as far as an early macro press could be hurt. The disadvantage for Thebus is going for dropships. It looks like he's had to cut SCV production to really execute this build. So he needs to get drone kills to make this work. Moving up now, the Hydralisks engaging immediately. The Vulture's trying to micro against this. One Hydral is down. One drone has been killed. The drone's piling up. This is certainly disrupting mining time. Two drones down. The Hydral's still having trouble kiting around and dealing with, but two Vultures down thus far only, yeah, looks like this is going to get cleaned up and there was only, what, three Vulture? Three drone kills. So Thebus with a slight economic edge, but that was a huge investment and a big counterattack now from Jiraiya upon seeing that. He's just moving out. Phoebus already has some medic marines in position. He needs a large group of Hydralis to press through this. This is going to be a quick rush. A science vessel is being produced. But it is possible that Jiraiya could go for a busk right now. And he might have an overwhelming attack force to do it. It's going to come down to misfire going up the ramp. There are two medics in position. Usually medic marines trade very well against Hydralis. But if you can just overwhelm... You can get it done. Jiraiya needs to focus fire these Marines down. Doing a good job of doing so thus far. More Marines coming in support, but there's only two barracks with their production here. Still needs to focus fire. You can see where that holding that ramp position is critical because of that misfire. Makes it a lot easier for those Medic Marines to hold it. SCV's pulling off the line. But Thebus might be in trouble. He's trying to build that second command center. Still trying to build more Marines. Range is being upgraded. He still has stim pack, but he doesn't have a lot of defensive attack forces. Siege tech and a siege tank would squelch this, but Jiraiya is backing off in the meantime, going ahead and grabbing a third base. Moving up to Lair, there are options for him. Getting another creep colony as well, so he wants to get aggressive with this. I'm wondering if potentially he wants to follow this up with... It, it's possible he could double expand and go for Lurker Tech. Still has opportunities to harass that command center because those medic marines, I still don't think, can punch through the hydrosks that are there. So it is possible he could harass this command center, delay it potentially, get a couple additional marine kills. More siege tanks being produced. Initial comp sat by Phoebus. He's going to go ahead and see the creep colonies there. I think he also got a look at the Hydralist den, and he also sees that lair being morphed. So nice, nice scan on his part. SCVs being boxed in otherwise. And expending those comp sats, this is kind of the other advantage of seeing that Hydralist den. We're going back in that position. Lurker Tech being upgraded where he needs to conserve that commsat potentially. Ooh, Medic's just down here with that bunker. Command Center floating out. Right now, though, Jiraiya with the economic lead and three bases. This is turning into a very unusual mid-game ZVT. With Siege Tank kind of already in a position to kind of go mid-game Siege. Siege Tech being upgraded. Science Vessel's already there. I think Thebus wants to follow this up with another quick attempted bust. Drones are being transferred to the 3 o'clock location. Now, the timing of this, does Thebus hit his move-out timing before Jiraiya has lurkers in position to contain it? Three gases are there. Thebus drops another commsat, checks the main, sees a queen's nest and an evolution chamber, and that queen's nest is an indicator to him that Jiraiya is, in fact, thinking about moving to hive tech rather than going for a bus. So he's going to start gathering up to move. Dropping another, oops, dropping another commsat briefly. I think on the front, though. The Hydralisks eating siege tank fire. And now it is going to be a little bit of a race against time. Lurker Tech just finishing. But are Lurkers going to be able to morph for Jiraiya? And is he going to have enough of an attack force to potentially stop what could be an oncoming press? Phoebus moving out with three siege tanks. A control group and a half of Medic Marines. And he has that Science Vessel overhead. Now keep in mind, Siege Tanks can range Lurkers. So Jiraiya needs to do some sort of press to make it happen. Morphing Hive at the Natural Expansion. Hydralis is getting picked off. 
Some lurkers are morphing. He needs to make sure these Hydralis stay alive so he has something to pincer with. They're getting picked off. And Phoebus is now pressing in a rush to that natural expansion. Some lurkers and Hydralis pressed underneath. This is where Phoebus needs to play very, very carefully. Some Medic Marines getting caught there. The lurkers engaging wholesale. The Science Vessel out of position initially. The Siege Tanks mostly getting picked off. And that Medic Marine got line getting obliterated. A defense matrix on the remaining siege tank, but I think Jiraiya is happy to go ahead and back off with what's left. Let that defense matrix remain, and now Phoebus needs to be careful to go ahead. I would draw those troops back, because there is a potential counterattack situation where Jiraiya could just get lurkers into his natural expansion. Siege tank resieging while it still has the defense matrix. Jiraiya can wait it out at this stage. He's up in supply, up in workers. Producing some additional Zerglings to go ahead and engage this. He's happy to sacrifice a Sutton Colony. I don't think this is enough to press through. Thebus, honestly, I think getting a little bit overly aggressive here. Another dropship moving in, though, to the main. This could be the game ender here. So while Jiraiya is engaging and taking care of this front, a drop of Marines going into the main. So this gets cleaned up rapidly, but how quickly is Jiraiya able to reinforce the main? Thus far, getting the drones out of there rapidly... That gas being disrupted momentarily. Consume being upgraded. It looks like the Lurkers and Zerglings are able to get there. There is no medic support. So it looks like this is going to be cleaned up rather rapidly. The Marines at the main did not get a lot accomplished. So Phoebus, in his aggression, this time it hurts him. Second bunker on the front. He's going to need it. Because the Defiler Mound is already out. Level 1 weapons for the Zerglings is on the way. We already have level 1 Carapace. For the Lurkers, do we have the Spines upgrade as well? No, not yet. SCV going to go ahead and move out to Scout, but the Defiler Mount, once Consume finishes, Phoebus could be in a lot of trouble because his Science Vessel count, because he's been producing so many Siege Tanks, has been rather light. He looks like he's just now starting his second Science Vessel. That could easily get picked off by the Hydralisks that are out in the field. The Zerglings are going to get really scary really fast with the Adrenal upgrade that potentially is on the way or upgrading. So Thebus trying to get aggressive, move out. In the meantime, Jiraiya has taken the bottom right-hand corner. The Science Vessel exposing itself on the front to get an Irradiate on a Defiler. Brilliant play on Thebus's part, realizing his situation, pressing forward to pick off the one Defiler that was there that could have potentially ended the game. And instead, the Defiler being forced to drop. And just this shows the level of aggression that Thebus throws out there. He refuses to play defense on his natural expansion. Diving in with Siege Tanks and Marines at the third. Drea out of position currently. Some Firebats moving in as well. Now engaging with the fi The Lurkers look like... I mean, this will contain it. But this is also buying Thebus some time. To go ahead and get some more defenses up and basically keep these lurkers and defilers off his natural expansion. Unfortunately for him, in doing this, he's only taking out Sutton Colonies. He's not getting any drones and he's losing a lot of his troop count. Jiraiya, undeterred, going ahead and continuing to expand behind this. Sending out a flood of Zerglings. There are Firebats and Medics to go ahead and engage it there. So Phoebus, already ahead of this. The lurkers, unfortunately, walking... And getting wiped out as they're moving across that 6 o'clock. The Zerglings repositioning away now. Looks like they're going to get cleaned up. Science Vessel still overhead. And Phoebus being very aggressive with what he's got. Some Medics and Marines being cleaned up on that corner. And it looks like there's going to be just a Zergling flood from all directions from Jiraiya. To try to clean up this attack force. The Lurkers now moving in to deal with the Firebats. Easily able to do so. And a single irradiate, which honestly need to be safe from for something else. But these lurkers are going to be able to... Well, never mind. I thought they were going to be able to clean up that siege tank. But it looks like they're just out of range. So Phoebus, through some nice positioning, able to keep this potential attack force. Threatening Jiraiya along that 3 o'clock. In the meantime, he's gotten the supply lead. And is continuing to flood firebats out. To press into this. Jiraiya still in a strong position. But Phoebus making him work for it. Level 2 Carapace just now coming online. Lurker's being cleaned up now. Another small attack force for Jiraiya. He's at 50 drones, by the way, so look for him to potentially turn into Zaron style. This is what I was talking about earlier. No science vessel in position to help 
escort that. Something Colony is continuing to be picked off. That Science Fossil is just 11 health. And losing that will be a critical shift. That's down. Lurker's now planted. That Siege Tank has been wiped out. And now Phoebus, he's got a Siege Tank, another Science Vessel, a handful of Marines to defend. But bottom right has been grabbed. A single Medic working that direction. Jiraiya with the Supply Lead. He's got an Ultralisk Cavern already up. Working on Ultralisk Speed. He's got all sorts of gas to work with that. Medic Marines trying... Sorry, just Marines and Firebats and a Siege Tank trying to make their way down here. A Firebat sneaks through. Might be able to get some kills with that. Some Zerglings should be able to deal with it. The Marines stimming. And now Phoebus' aggression, because it was so well handled by Jiraiya, is honestly playing against him a little bit. The Firebats very rapidly wiped out. Phoebus trying to take an exposed 9 o'clock expansion to hold this. Already has a bunker. He's trying to double expand behind this. Wow. So bold maneuvers, but in his attempt to double expand, Ultralisks with the Carapace upgrade have been fielded. And it is honestly kind of an... I, I want to say it's an afterthought for Jiraiya to finish this match out, but this has been Phoebus, and Phoebus we've seen in prior matches presses and presses and presses and makes it extremely difficult for his opponents to finish matches out. Swarm being dropped, some Zerglings being picked off, another Defiler being picked off in open field. However, the Ultralisk count is going to continue to grow. Jiraiya just needs to spend those minerals, keep macroing up. Handful of Zerglings, the only thing between this army and that 3 o'clock. A dropship now moving into the bottom right-hand corner. Thebus doing Thebus things. There's already a Defiler and Zerglings there to go ahead and engage this, however. So he's going to try to pressure the 3 o'clock. Looks like he's also sending a science vessel at other locations as a distractionary tactic. And diving in. The Ultralisks are there. Unfortunately, the Ultralisks killing friendly Zerglings in the midst of this. So raid 8s are being dropped, but no science vessel support here. So the Marines and Medics and everything else. Finally, the science vessels backing up and re-engaging. Lurkers and Marines now moving out of that bottom right-hand expansion. Still no Spire. In location. More lurkers moving in position. Siege tank looks like it's going to pick, get picked off. And a redrop, but the Ultralisks are still there in the bottom right. So Thebus not getting anything. A science vessel still overhead. Honestly, as soon as a spire is planted. I don't even know that a spire is necessary. There is a spire. Jiraiya getting a little bit overexcited with this attack force. Moving in the Ultralisks and the Zerglings. But without the Defiler support. If the Defiler was here, honestly, this would be a game-ending maneuver. Still might get a lot accomplished here. Never mind. Gets cleaned up because it kind of went in piecemeal. The dropship unloaded, looking to potentially reload. Jiraiya at 60 drones now. Taking out a Science Vessel there on the front. Phoebus has the 9 o'clock base there. It's not very well saturated. Has 7 barracks rolling. Is continuing the, the general... Let me get this back up. Science Vessel count rolling. Does have the double engineering bay. As far as upgrades, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. He's behind in the overall upgrade advantage. But because of all the shenanigans he's pulled. Attacking at every location. Ooh, that's going to get spotted. That's not going to stay for long. Phoebus moving out with another attack force. He's at least gotten the science vessels up. Still feels like it might be too little too late. The one saving grace here is that Benj is Dry has been sending out really small attack forces, and he hasn't been sending them out with full complements. Science vessel following drones. Natural expansion up there. Another drop. Sorry, an irradiate this time. Going to kill some drones in that bottom right-hand corner. But Jiraiya just kind of doing that slow blanket macro style. Where he's happy to send out attack forces, wipe out everything that Thebus is sending, interrupting that 9 o'clock base with some Ultralisks and Zerglings. And he is slowly macroing and macroing and macroing and getting larger and larger. Currently, as I say that, he's at 171 supply, nearly double the supply of Thebus. Showing why he belongs in this semifinal match. Ultralisks, there's GG from Thebus just realizing it's too little too late and he is just out macroed. We're going to go to a final match to decide who advances into the grand finals of Hasu League. 
Jiraiya showing the heat. Yeah, wow, what a game. Intense match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.